one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. This is Radio Free Mormon, on the air, broadcasting behind enemy lines. Tonight's episode, RFM versus BYUPD. The cover-up continues. By way of background, you may remember that Radio Free Mormon sent a public disclosure request to the Brigham Young University Police Department last year requesting an unredacted copy of the police reports related to the investigation of Joseph Bishop's alleged sexual assault on McKenna Denson when she was a sister missionary at the Missionary Training Center in Provo, Utah, back in 1984, and at which time Joseph Bishop was the president of the Missionary Training Center. And in addition to my request for an unredacted copy of the police reports, I also requested a copy of the audio tape of the interview BYUPD did with Joseph Bishop during the course of their investigation. Following the rules as set forth in the GRAMA statute, GRAMA is the public disclosure statute in Utah. It stands for Government Records Access and Management Act, or for short, we use the acronym GRAMA, G-R-A-M-A. I sent that request initially to the custodian of records, Lieutenant Stephen Messick of the BYUPD. He responded with a firm and unequivocal denial of my request, stating that the BYUPD is not subject to the GRAMA law because the BYUPD is not a public agency, but is instead a police force that is fully owned and operated by a private institution, Brigham Young University, which of course is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And let me pause to clarify here that the flat-out rejection and denial of my request was my request for the audio tape of the interview BYUPD had with Joseph Bishop. I had also requested an unredacted copy of the police reports related to that investigation, and they did provide me with a copy of the police reports. However, those police reports contained the same redactions as the reports they had given to the media. I then took the next step to appeal that decision by Lieutenant Messick to the Chief of Police, who at that time was Larry Stott. Larry Stott also denied my appeal, at which point I took that appeal to the Utah State Records Committee in the summer of last year. I was not the only party requesting these records, and at the hearing in front of the Utah Records Committee, we were successful in getting the Utah Records Committee to find that the BYUPD is in fact subject to GRAMA and therefore needed to comply with these requests. Shortly thereafter, BYU appealed that decision to the courts in Utah, where this case is safely parked, awaiting a decision from the Utah State Supreme Court dealing with the issue on another case. But while time ticks by, and we are patiently waiting for the Utah Supreme Court to render their decision on the issue of whether the BYUPD is in fact subject to GRAMA, the Utah State Legislature got to work and passed a law specifically stating that the BYUPD was, in fact, subject to GRAMA. That law passed the legislature and was signed by the governor and went into effect on May 14th of 2019. Now, it seemed to me that once the state of Utah had passed a law stating unequivocally that the BYUPD was subject to GRAMA, the issue on appeal before the Utah Supreme Court would apply only to requests made prior to May 14th of 2019, and therefore, I thought it was a good time to submit a new request to the BYU police, because any request made after May 14th, 2019, could not be put off by the BYU PD under the excuse that they were not subject to grandma, because manifestly, they were because the legislature said so. So on May 16th, 2019, I submitted a new request to the custodian of records at the BYU Police Department, which states as follows, Dear Custodian of Records, Pursuant to the newly amended Government Records Access and Management Act, which provides that Brigham Young University Police is subject to GRAMA, I respectfully request the following documents in your possession or control. Number one, a full and complete copy of the audio recording of the interview with Joseph Bishop conducted by BYU Police as part of their investigation under Incident Report 17BY05023. And number two was a request not for an unredacted copy of the police reports, because by now we pretty much know what is behind all the redactions that the BYU police made in their reports by means of comparing them with the different versions that they released to Mormon leaks, now the Truth and Transparency Foundation, as well as their initial release to the media, and then their second release to the media. 
By comparing those different reports, which did not have the same redactions, we were able to uncover pretty much all of the information that they apparently did not want the public to know. We've covered that in previous podcasts. So my new request, number two, is not for an unredacted copy of the police reports. Instead, it is for any documents that show who it was who was making these decisions to redact the police reports and why. Here's the language of my public disclosure request from May 16th, 2019. Number two, copies of any and all emails, documents, notes, and any and all other materials, whether recorded in hard copy or electronically or otherwise, related to the decisions, opinions, advice, counsel, minutes, notes, or any other mention made whatsoever relating to the release of the police reports and or audio tapes to the media and or any and all other persons, and also related to the decisions, opinions, advice, counsel, minutes, notes, or any other mention made whatsoever, relating to the redaction of said police reports and or audio tapes, regardless of whether said emails or other documents are to or from persons or entities inside or outside the BYU Police Department. And that is the end of the second request. You see, it occurred to me that the BYU Police Department, in making their decisions to redact documents and audio tapes, was acting in a way completely different from the way that a normal police department would be acting when faced with similar requests. They would simply release the documents. They would make the normal standard redactions to hide the names and contact information of victims and possibly sensitive witnesses, and then they would release everything else. But this is not how they have acted. Instead, they have acted in such a way as to try and obscure information that would normally be released by a police agency. And not only have they tried to obscure information, the information that they have tried to obscure tends to be information that reflects negatively on the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and its leadership. It also tends to cover up evidence that shows that leaders of the LDS Church knew or may have known about these allegations made by McKenna Denson decades ago. Now, the issue of what the LDS Church knew and when they knew it is a critical component of the lawsuit that McKenna Denson filed against the LDS Church and which he was contemplating filing at the time that the BYU police was releasing these redacted reports to the media as well as to Radio Free Mormon. And putting those two facts together, number one, that the BYU PD was acting very strangely in the way they were redacting these police reports, and number two, that the things that were being redacted ended up being harmful to the LDS Church in their defense against the lawsuit, led me to think that it might be an interesting proposition to request all the emails and documentation related to who made these decisions about redactions of the police reports and why. My initial request to the custodian of records dated May 16th ends with thank you in advance for your cooperation with this request. Sincerely, Radio Free Mormon. Not unexpectedly, I received from the university police at BYU a denial of my grandma request, which was sent to me by Lieutenant Stephen Messick and states access to records or portions of records you requested is denied. These records have been classified with restricted access Pursuant to grammar or court rule, another state statute, federal statute, or federal regulation, please see the attached sheet for a description of the records denied and the reason for the denial. It then says notice of appeal. You have the right to appeal this denial to the chief administrative officer. Please direct your appeal to Chief Chris Autry. And then it gives his address and the basic information regarding the timeline for an appeal. The second page of this denial, which gives that detailed description as to the reasons for the denial, first addresses my request for a full and complete copy of the audio recording of the interview with Joseph Bishop conducted by BYU police as part of their investigation. And it states in a very long paragraph, which I'm going to boil down for purposes of this podcast, University Police denies your request for records because the records you seek are private records. And then it states the provisions of grammar under which they are claiming they are private. It then says also under another section, the request you have submitted seeks the same or substantially the same records that have already been requested 
and those requests have been denied and are the subject of litigation. Well, of course, there, my first request was denied because BYU PD said they're not subject to grandma. I have now made the same request after the law was enacted stating that the BYU police is subject to grandma, so that doesn't seem to be much of a defense there. It goes on, University Police's prior denial of the records request is still pending in the courts for the state of Utah. But then it goes on, to be clear, University Police is not presently asserting that it is not a government entity as that term is defined in the new Grandma statute. University Police acknowledges that it became a governmental entity subject to the Government Records Access Management Act, Grandma, on May 14, 2019, the effective date of Utah Senate Bill 197. However, applying the terms of Grandma, University Police designates the records as private for the reasons stated above. So they're no longer saying that we don't have to give them to you because we're not subject to grandma, that has already been taken care of by the statute, which they have to recognize and admit. But now they've shifted their defense and saying, okay, we're subject to grandma, but we're saying these records in this audio tape are private and therefore we're not going to give them to you. Now to make this clear, standard operating procedure is that an audio tape of an interview with a criminal suspect should be treated exactly the same as police reports of an interview with a criminal suspect or any other witness in a case, which means that the police department should provide a copy of it to anybody who requests it after making appropriate redactions within the body of the tape itself. But this they refuse to do. They are simply sitting completely on this audio tape and not providing me one bit of it. Now, as to the second request that I made for copies of any and all emails, etc., related to the opinions or decisions about what to release from the police reports and what to redact, their response is, University Police denies your request because the records you seek are protected records under Utah Code, and then it gives the provisions that they're relying on there. Now, I do not think that those are protected records, but that is what the appeals process is for. This is stage one. I have requested these records from the custodian of records at the BYU Police Department. He has said nope, and he has asserted these defenses and these reasons why he believes that his denial of my request is supported by the grandma statute. So after having received this initial denial, I, of course, appealed it to the chief of police, who is no longer Larry Stott. It is now Chris Autry. By letter dated June 3rd, I wrote to Chief Chris Autry. Dear Chief Autry, I mailed a grandma request to your department by letter dated May 16th, 2019. Copy enclosed. Lieutenant Stephen Messick sent me the enclosed denial of my grandma request by email on June 3rd, 2019. The audio recording of a criminal suspect in a case where the criminal investigation is closed and not pending prosecution is not private under grandma. Nor are copies of emails relating to internal decisions to redact police reports private under grandma. The denial of my grandma request by Lieutenant Messick is not done in good faith. Grandma is designed to promote transparency by police agencies, not protect it. I respectfully request you grant my appeal and provide me with the requested documents. Thank you in advance for your courtesy and cooperation. Sincerely, RFM. And in due course, on June 20th, 2019, I received the following letter from the Chief of Police of the BYU PD. Dear Radio Free Mormon. Actually, it doesn't even say dear. It just says Radio Free Mormon. I am writing to notify you of my denial of the appeal. Well, no great surprise there. Of my denial of the appeal received by the University Police Department at Brigham Young University on June 7th, 2019. I have read and carefully considered your appeal. And one wonders who it is he's also talked to about it. But he says he's read and carefully considered it. Also, Lieutenant Stephen Messick and I have discussed the original request you submitted on May 16th, 2019, as well as your appeal. I believe the documents you requested were properly classified as private. As explained in the original response from Lieutenant Messick, you have the right to appeal my decision to the State Records Committee or District Court as provided in the Utah Code. You have 30 days to make your appeal. You may send your appeal to, and then it gives the address of the Utah State Records Committee. Respectfully, Chief Chris Autry, University Police Department, Brigham Young University. So, not about to take no for an answer any more than I was on the first go-around. I filed my appeal with the State Records Committee on June 24th, 2019. 
And this is what it says. Subsection 1. Facts. May 16th, 2019, I mailed a grammar request to the BYU PD seeking disclosure of a police interview audio recording of Joseph Bishop conducted pursuant to incident report, etc. Additionally, I requested copies of any and all emails, documents, etc. related to the decision to redact the police reports regarding the same matter. A true and correct copy of this grammar request is attached here, too. June 3, 2019, in an undated letter, but received by petitioner on June 3, 2019, BYU PD Custodian of Records, Lieutenant Stephen Messick, sent petitioner a grammar request notice of denial, a true and correct copy of which is attached here too. June 3, 2019, petitioner appealed the grammar notice of denial to BYU PD Chief Chris Autry, a true and correct copy of which is attached here too. June 20, 2019, BYU PD Chief Chris Autry sent petitioner a notice of denial of the appeal, a true and correct copy of which is attached here too. Subsection 2. Appeal. Wherefore, pursuant to Utah Code 63G-2-403, petitioner hereby timely appeals BYU PD Chief Autry's denial of grandma appeal to the Utah State Records Committee. Subsection 3. Short Statement of Facts, Reasons, and Legal Authority. The Utah State Legislature has now passed a law specifically subjecting BYU PD to grandma requirements. The initial request in this matter was made after that law had gone into effect. BYU PD, while acknowledging it is now subject to grandma, continues to refuse to abide by the requirements of grandma in derogation of the fundamental principles upon which grandma was enacted. There is no reasonable and good faith basis for BYU PD to deny petitioner's grandma request in this matter. It is evident BYU PD will continue to refuse to be transparent in its operations until the Utah State Records Committee orders them to be transparent, and probably not even then. Yes, I actually did include that in my appeal, and probably not even then. For all the above reasons, petitioner's appeal to the Utah State Records Committee in this matter should be granted, respectfully submitted, Radio Free Mormon. I have now received back from the Utah State Records Committee the following letter dated June 25th, 2019, stating as follows, Dear Radio Free Mormon, yes, at least the Utah Records Committee says dear, Radio Free Mormon. The State Records Committee has received a request for a hearing to appeal a denial decision made by Chief Chris Autry. The Chief's decision was related to your record request for an audio recording of the interview with Joseph Bishop, conducted by BYU Police, etc. This is to inform you that a hearing is scheduled for Thursday, September 12, 2019. Due to the possibility of multiple hearings, the schedule is subject to change, so be available from 9 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. So, round two between RFM and the BYU PD is set for a hearing before the Utah State Records Committee on Thursday, September 12, 2019. Now, in the meantime, the Salt Lake Tribune, as well as KUTV, obtained and posted a copy of of the audio recording that BYU police did with Joseph Bishop. So my request in that regard has been rendered somewhat pointless from my point of view. It is already available now to the public. So in this appeal, I am going to be focusing on the emails and documents related to the decision to make those redactions in the police report. And I want the Utah State Records Committee to understand why it is that I'm interested in those documents, in those emails, in who made those decisions to redact the police reports and why. So in this case, I am going to be submitting some supplemental briefing on that issue, which will hopefully help the Utah State Records Committee understand why this information is important for the public to know about. And although I have not completed and submitted this briefing, I've got most of it hammered out, and this is how it runs. Petitioner, that's me, Petitioner has requested any and all emails and or other documents of any sort relating to the decision made by the Brigham Young Police Department related to prior releases of police reports related to their investigation of Joseph Bishop based on the report of McKenna Denson that she was raped by Joseph Bishop in 1984 while she was a sister missionary at the Missionary Training Center in Provo, Utah and while Joseph Bishop was the president of the Missionary Training Center. That is one long run-on sentence and I will probably clean that up in the final version. In late 2017, McKenna Denson met with Joseph Bishop and surreptitiously recorded an interview she had with him in which he made inculpatory statements. McKenna Denson obtained legal representation and was engaged in negotiations with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to see if resolution could be achieved without the filing of a lawsuit. 
On March 19, 2018, McKenna Denson's recorded interview with Joseph Bishop was released publicly on the Mormon League's website. The media immediately picked up on the story and requested of the Brigham Young University Police Department, hereafter BYUPD, a copy of their investigative reports relating to this incident. BYUPD provided the media with a nine-page police report, a true and correct copy of which is attached here to as Exhibit A and incorporated by reference. Although standard types of redactions occur throughout the report, it will be seen that virtually the entirety of page 6 is redacted. The only language not redacted on page 6 of Exhibit A is the phrase at the bottom right, quote, dot, 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 was attached to this report, period, end of quote. That's it. That's the only thing on page 6 at the bottom right. Everything else is redacted. And when you compare it with later releases of the same police report, we find out that page 6 is the key to the entire report because it is on page 6 that all the allegations against Joseph Bishop are set forth. All of this was redacted in the initial release of the police reports by the BYUPD to the media in March of 2018. Again, the only language not redacted on page 6 is the phrase at the bottom right of the page, dot, 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 was attached to this report. This will become significant later, I write, as it is apparent that what was attached to this report was the audio tape of BYUPD's interview with Joseph Bishop going on. Not satisfied with the heavily redacted police report provided by BYUPD, the media pushed back and the following day received a less redacted copy of the same police reports from the BYUPD, a true and correct copy of which is attached there to as Exhibit B and incorporated by reference. Although most of the redactions from page 6 were removed in the second release of the reports to the media, several complete lines remain redacted, including the four lines at the bottom of the page. Note that now the phrase in the bottom right of page 6, dot, 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 was attached to this report, has also been redacted in the new version. Page 9 of the police report consists of three lines. That's all there is on page 9. It's at the very top. There's just three lines of text. In the original media release, Exhibit A, these three lines have been properly redacted to remove identifying information of McKenna Denson, whose name is included here since she has long since gone public as Joseph Smith's alleged victim. Page 9 documents the fact that McKenna Denson sent BYUPD a rough draft of her statement through email and that her statement was attached to the report. On the second release of the same reports to the media, however, the entire three lines on page 9 have been redacted in order to remove any mention of the fact that McKenna Denson had sent BYUPD a rough draft of her statement which was attached to and made part of the police report. Although multiple grammar requests have been made by multiple individuals and agencies, the BYUPD has never, to petitioner's knowledge, provided a copy of McKenna Denson's statement, even though this statement was emailed by McKenna Denson to BYUPD on 12-7-17, and even though BYUPD followed standard operating procedure of making her statement part of the report. Now, what standard operating procedure is, of course, you're going to want to get a statement from the complaining witness in a criminal investigation. McKenna Denson wrote up a statement, attached it to an email, emailed it to the police, and what they would do, of course, is not just leave it in the email. They would open it up, they would print it out, they would put it in the file. It becomes part of the police reports in their case. Nevertheless, in response to multiple requests from different individuals and agencies for the reports related to their investigation, they have never provided McKenna Denson's statement, to my knowledge. Going on. Finally, the language at the bottom of page 6 of the reports that was redacted in subsequent reports, dot 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 was attached to this report, can be seen in the second media release to be in the context of the police interview of Joseph Bishop conducted December 5, 2017. It is clear from subsequent developments that what was, quote, attached to this report, unquote, was the audio recording BYUPD conducted of their investigative interview with Joseph Bishop. It is apparent that BYUPD did not want the contents of the audio recording of their interview with Joseph Bishop to come to light, and therefore redacted from their reports any mention of the fact it was audio recorded on page 6. Similarly, it is apparent that BYUPD did not want the contents of McKenna Denson's written statement 
to come to light, and therefore redacted in subsequent releases of the reports any mention of the existence of her statement on page 9. So that sets forth the facts against which my request for the emails related to the decisions to redact police reports is set. My briefing goes on. Documents and recordings begin to surface. First, it should be observed that in responding to these grammar requests, the BYUPD is the police department for Brigham Young University, which is wholly owned and operated by the LDS Church. Prior grammar requests for police reports have played out against the backdrop of the lawsuit by McKenna Denson against the LDS Church. As of the first heavily redacted disclosure of police reports by BYUPD to the media on March 22, 2018, McKenna Denson had already been engaged in private negotiations with the LDS Church relating to her contemplated lawsuit. There can be no doubt that as part of their investigation of McKenna Denson's complaint, the LDS Church had obtained and reviewed unredacted versions of the BYUPD police report as well as the audio recording BYUPD made of Joseph Bishop, and also McKenna Denson's written statement to the BYUPD, which was attached to the police reports. A central issue in McKenna Denson's lawsuit against the LDS Church was what did the LDS Church know regarding Joseph Bishop's sexual predations, and when did they know it? And now a section dealing with the McKenna Denson written statement to BYUPD. The question must then be asked, what is it about McKenna Denson's written statement to BYUPD that would cause the BYUPD to depart from standard grammar request procedures as to not only fail to produce a copy of her statement in response to grammar requests for any and all police reports relating to the investigation, but also to redact from the narrative report itself any mention that her written statement even exists. A copy of McKenna Denson's statement has surfaced separate and apart from any grammar request, and what petitioner believes to be a true and correct copy of that statement is attached here to as Exhibit C and incorporated by reference. Page 1 of the Denson statement shows it was emailed by Ms. Denson to Bob N. at byu.edu of BYUPD on December 7, 2017, commencing with, quote, So I have prepared a rough draft of the statement of facts which I am enclosing, end of quote. Page 2 commences the Denson statement itself, which is dated December 6, 2017. Page 4 of the Denson statement includes claims that Ms. Denson met with top church leaders. The second paragraph from the top of page 4 states, I had to meet with Elder Thomas S. Monson before I could be released back into the mission field, unquote. It should be noted that at the time of this alleged meeting in 1984, Elder Monson was an apostle of the LDS Church, and at the time this statement was written by Ms. Denson in December of 2017, Elder Monson was president of the LDS Church. In the fourth paragraph of page four, the Denson statement claims Ms. Denson met with her bishop, Ron Levitt, regarding her allegations against Joseph Bishop in or around 1988, that Ron Levitt reported it to the stake president, who then called and reported it to church headquarters in Salt Lake. In the fifth and sixth paragraphs of page four, the Denson statement includes claims that Ms. Denson met with Elder Carlos A.C., A-S-A-Y, regarding her allegation against Joseph Bishop in or around 1988, and that Elder A.C. said he would investigate the incident and let her know the outcome. It should be noted that at the time of Ms. Denson's alleged meeting with Elder Carlos A.C., he was a general authority and member of the first quorum of the 70. Given that the LDS Church owns and operates BYU, and by extension the BYUPD, the failure of the BYUPD to disclose the Denson statement to the multiple agencies and individuals who submitted grammar requests to the BYUPD, and further, to redact from the police reports the very existence of the Denson statement, raises questions as to who is making these redaction determinations and why. It would seem apparent that no police agency acting of its own accord and in good faith reliance on the grammar statute would make such redactions, and when we look at what is contained in the Denson Statement itself, we see claims that Ms. Denson met with multiple church leaders, one, her bishop, Ron Levitt, two, Elder Thomas S. Monson, and three, Elder Carlos A.C. There is nothing about this information that should cause any redaction concerns to the BYUPD if they were operating as an independent 
police agency. On the other hand, given the status of the pending lawsuit against the LDS Church, as well as the public relations difficulties the LDS Church was experiencing in March of 2018, subsequent to the leak of the audio of McKenna Denson's meeting with Joseph Bishop, there is good reason why the LDS Church would not want this information provided to the public. In short, while the BYUPD would not care that Ms. Denson claimed she met with top church officials relating to Joseph Bishop, the LDS Church would care very much. BYUPD would have no motive to depart so egregiously from standard operating procedures as to redact the Denson statement and any mention of its existence, but the LDS Church would have a motive to do so. It is here that the relationship between the LDS Church and the BYUPD becomes concerning. If BYUPD were acting of its own accord in making these bizarre redactions from its reports, then no harm, no foul. If, on the other hand, it is somebody outside the BYUPD who is making these redaction determinations, somebody who would benefit from the redacted information not being made public, then there is definitely a problem. This is why Petitioner seeks for any and all emails and or other documentation relating to the decisions made to redact the BYUPD reports to find out who is calling the shots on this and why. Then the next subsection has to do with the BYUPD audio recorded interview with Joseph Bishop. A similar situation presents itself with regard to the decision made to redact any reference to the fact that BYUPD recorded their hour-long investigative interview with Joseph Bishop on December 5, 2017. Again, the LDS Church must have been aware of the contents of the unredacted police report by the time the first reports were produced by BYUPD in response to media requests on or around March 20th, 2018. For some reason, almost the entirety of page 6 of that grammar release, Exhibit A, is completely redacted. All except for the words, quote, dot, 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 was attached to this report, unquote, at the bottom right of page 6. As stated above, in comparing the first redacted media release of the report, with the second redacted media release of the report, it can be seen that the language dot 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 was attached to this report has now been redacted, together with the four lines immediately surrounding this phrase, which is the concluding lines of the BYUPD's report dealing with their interview of Joseph Bishop. In context, then, it is virtually certain that what the BYUPD did not want the media to know was that they had audio taped their interview with Joseph Bishop. Again, this is a departure from standard operating procedures of police agencies. Why would the BYUPD care if the public knew they recorded their interview with Joseph Bishop? It would appear, as with the Denson statement, that steps were taken to keep hidden from the public the fact the BYUPD interview with Joseph Bishop even existed, so as to forestall and prevent any subsequent grammar request for the audio recording itself. Since the time the petitioner made its initial request for this recording, however, the recording has been obtained by various news agencies outside the Gramma request process and posted publicly. The Salt Lake Tribune published excerpts of the BYUPD interview with Joseph Bishop on its website on June 16, 2019, and KUTV published the entirety of the hour-long police interview on their website on June 17, 2019, and I provide links to both of those web pages. In the audio recording of the BYUPD interview with Joseph Bishop, he admitted to advising church leaders of his sexual depredations on sister missionaries while he was the MTC president and that he was allowed to continue serving as MTC president. Joseph Bishop also admitted in the audio recording that he was contacted by Elder Carlos Acey's office regarding the allegation made by Ms. Denson. Again, we are left with the baffling situation of BYUPD acting so outside the bounds of standard operating procedures as to not only withhold the recording of their interview with Joseph Bishop, but also to redact from their police reports any mention that such a recording exists. Again, the BYUPD would have no interest as a law enforcement agency in keeping this information from the public. And again, it is the LDS Church, the owner and operator of BYU, and for whom the BYUPD works, who would have such an interest in preventing this information 
from being made public. So there, I set forth the facts that I believe establish a prima facie case that the LDS Church has been involved in directing the BYU Police Department as to what redactions to make in the police reports, because those redactions appear to have been made in such a way as to protect the interests of the LDS Church, not only their public relations interests, but also their specific interests in relation to the lawsuit filed by Ms. Denson. As I say, I will be cleaning up this briefing a bit before submitting it to the Utah State Records Committee. I am required to have it into them and also a copy to the BYU PD at least five days before the hearing, so I have a little bit of breathing room to work on this. But I will definitely let you know what the decision of the Utah State Records Committee is on my appeal, and whether they agree that the BYU Police Department needs to provide the documentation I have requested as to who it is who's been making these decisions about redactions of police reports and audio tapes, and why. I don't know if you have ever seen the musical comedy The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, but in the movie version back from the 1980s, Charles Durning, no less, plays the governor of Texas, and in that role, he gives the greatest performance I have ever seen Charles Durning give. And in that role, he does a wonderful song and dance to a tune called The Sidestep. And it deals with how he, as the governor of Texas, sidesteps all the questions that are being asked to him by reporters and how it is that he does it. In particular, what he's going to be doing about closing down a certain whorehouse outside of town run by Miss Mona, played by Dolly Parton. But the reason I think of Charles Durning doing the sidestep in The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas is because it reminds me so much of how the BYU PD is playing this game of denying my requests for police reports that in any other situation would have been handed over readily and would not be requiring successive appeals in order to obtain the information. That's about all for tonight. Until next time, this is Radio Free Mormon, signing off the air.